Hi, hey, welcome to this tutorial on working with linguistic data in Excel. I have no idea at this stage where exactly this is going to take us, but the motivation is that while we have lots of textbooks and workshops on data collection and data analysis, depending on the tools we're using, there is relatively little of that on the intermediate step, the data processing and annotation. Now we mostly use Excel for this purpose because it's a very powerful and very flexible tool to do the tasks that we have to do in processing and especially in annotation. But we haven't been properly trained in how to use Excel. So all of us that are using it have acquired our knowledge over the years, learning by doing, so to speak. So with this tutorial, I'd like to pass on some of that experience. Uh, that should help you avoid some of the pitfalls, but also think about more general principles on how you set up a document and how you learn to help yourselves. So having said that, we've all developed our own styles over the years, which is probably also what you'll be uh, doing. But at the end of this tutorial, you should be comfortable enough with Excel to, when you're faced with a problem, formulate a question, Google it, and apply the information that you're getting to solve your problem. In this tutorial, I'm assuming no prior knowledge of Excel, but I hope that even if you have been working with Excel, that some of the information is useful, especially in the area of making your life a little easier by looking at some very cool functions that can automate a few processes that you are normally doing manually. Now I use Excel a lot, but I actually only use it for a relatively small section of my research process. Other people are using Excel for much more advanced stuff, even into relatively elaborate statistical analyses for which I use a different tool. Because I work on a principle of one task, one tool, which basically means that I use the tool for the task that it performs best and then use a different tool for a different task. Let me illustrate that with the three steps that we are looking at in linguistic data analysis, which is collection, processing, and eventually analysis. With collection, we may have data from corpora that come from various different sources. You may have to process data from interviews, or you may get result files from uh, surveys and uh, linguistic experiments. Now the one task, one tool principle is best illustrated by looking at the corpus tools. So you may be familiar with a corpus environments such as Sketch Engine or CQP Web, which all come with their main function, the base functions, which is extracting data, doing a query uh, on a specific linguistic phenomenon. And then potentially they also have some rather elaborate tools, in built-in tools to do rudimentary statistical analyses or visualization, uh, stuff like that. One of the drawbacks of, of these systems is that the built-in functions, they're specific to that environment. So if you used to a specific tool in a Sketch Engine, if you have a corpus that is not available in Sketch Engine for which you have to use a different environment, that tool that you normally use, it may not be available in a different environment. So um, with Use, with working with the raw data and doing your analyses external to these environments gives you greater flexibility, obviously. And that's exactly what we use Excel for, is that we export raw data. So most of these programs allow you to export the raw data in a spreadsheet format, and then we can use the spreadsheet format or spreadsheet document to add our own data, which we call annotations, and do summary statistics and rudimentary data analysis. The same goes for interview data and especially for experimental data that is often also provided in spreadsheet format or at least in formats that are compatible with spreadsheet programs like Excel. So once you've done with the annotation and processing stage, you would be moving into the data analysis stage for which Excel has some built-in functions that you can use for a lot of purposes. Uh, summary statistics, basic visualization. So that's generally um, more than enough to do uh, undergrad papers, term papers, or BA thesis. But depending on the question, your statistical analysis might 
require you to perform a method that is unavailable in Excel for which you would then move on to uh, some larger or some, some, some more specific tool um, that performs that task really well. So we'll be using, uh, we'll be going into the data annotation and data processing stage using Excel, which allows you a greater flexibility. So the one task, one tool here means is that the drawbacks of large corpus environments, for instance, um, with Excel, you have a greater flexibility uh, is that if you have to switch uh, from one source to another, uh, if you have the raw data, you can still perform um, all of these tasks. So Excel gives you a um, slightly greater flexibility in some respects. What are the tools uh, that we need? Obviously, uh, we will need a spreadsheet uh, program. So for this tutorial, I'm using Excel, which is the system that I'm most familiar with, I'm used to, and I use all the time. If you haven't got access to Excel, or if you prefer to use open source programs, I would recommend that you use um, OpenOffice, uh, which is comparable to Excel and uh, in its powerfulness, in its flex flexibility, and also with respect to the communities online that can help you with certain problems or where there is FAQs that you can search uh, for a solution of a problem. I personally find Microsoft Excel to be slightly more intuitive, a bit less buggy, but the open office uh, suites are just as fine to use for that purpose. Slightly less flexible and powerful, but still relatively good, especially if you work collaboratively, is a Google Spreadsheet, which, as I said, is a bit more limited in the types of analysis that you can perform um, on it but it can be used to uh, share data quite um, easily. So that's also um, an option. One tool I would not recommend is Apple Numbers. So if you don't have access to Excel, but if you are on a Mac, uh, Numbers now comes pre-installed with the new operating systems. But I've had a look at it and it doesn't seem very intuitive and as powerful as would be um, OpenOffice. Okay, so I said I have no clear plan right now of where this tutorial is going to go, but we will be looking at more general issues, how to use Excel, what are the elements, what are some shortcuts that you can use to make your life a bit easier, how should you set up a document, um, documentation as well, which is um, relatively important uh, to know what you were actually doing a few days back or sometimes even a few hours. We will look at how to read in data that comes from different sources, right? Different corpus suites will have different formats of the raw data. How do you deal with that? We will look at processing data and data annotation, right? How do we enrich our data sets depending on a specific research question? The focus there will be slightly more on corpus linguistics, but the general principles obviously apply to all sorts of uh, data sets. And we will, in a final block, also be looking at basic statistical analysis that you can do in Excel, summary statistics, visualization, uh, things like that, right? So before you move on to more elaborate programs or statistical programmings uh, like R or Python, um, Excel is actually rather suitable to do uh, very basic of these operations. So the clips that I'm planning should be very brief, uh, anywhere between two and five minutes for each dealing with the specific topics that should help you get acquainted uh, and comfortable with Excel. So I'll add clips along the way. I also have a playlist of um, a specific order in which you can watch them, but you can come back and use this as a reference as well. If you have suggestions or problems that you uh, often face in working with Excel, um, leave a comment or drop me a line and I see if I can attend to that and make a little clip out of it. With that, see you in the next clips. Bye.